so man, standing desk. It's always gonna be clutch. But anyways, man, look, what's going on guys, man? Welcome back to another video. Today, y'all see what's going on by the title. We're putting together my photography studio once again. When I was back overseas in Germany, I did have a studio for photography and mixing with my office. And that's something I wanna get here as well. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna be going through the process of like the things that I bought and what I'm gonna be using to make this studio come to life, at least for the photo side of things. I'm about to get my hair redone dyed too. I want to get my roots to be another lighter color and then I want to go full blind maybe later on this year. But um, so a few things that I picked up. First thing, these super clamps. I got two of these. I already had one, this one right here. And then I picked up another one just so I can hold the hooks together to the poles that I bought. Next thing I picked up is this very pole leveler. Just pretty much just to level my very poles, just to make sure everything is level when I'm putting them up onto the walls. I got a bunch of these clamps. I don't know why I bought so many. I think I bought 10 on accident, but I might use them all, so we'll see. Two inch clamps and also everything is gonna be linked down in the description if you guys want to pick up anything that I'm gonna be talking about within this video. Next thing is, I got this, uh, what is this? This deep umbrella diffuser, it just diffuses the light for my umbrella. And then speaking of umbrellas, I did pick up a 51 inch deep umbrella with the silver inside to make the light spread out even more. When everything is pieced together. I'll show you guys how big the stuff is or that umbrella is. Um, I wanted to get the seven foot umbrella, but definitely was gonna be too big for this small office. So maybe one day if I could get a bigger space, I will definitely upgrade to a seven footer. But for now, the 51 inch, it's gonna work for me in this small little area. Next thing, which is a part of this kit that I bought from uh, b &H, it's the Very Drive, uh, Very Drives. <laughs> this is pretty much just uh, like, it's gonna hold the background paper on two of the Very Poles, if that makes sense. You guys will see everything once everything gets pieced together. Background holder hooks, this is going to hook on to the very poles through the super clamp and it's going to hold the rolls as well the background or backdrop paper yeah the next thing that came with the kit is obviously the very pole so i picked up the very poles just because i didn't want to put holes in my walls and it's just going to make everything a lot easier because i do rent here and i'm about to be leaving kind of soon so this would make everything 10 times easier when i'm about to leave and not have to worry about filling holes with like just different stuff to make it seem as if the hole was not there. The very poles just makes that entire situation like non-existent. So that's why I got that. It's a little bit more than the ones you put into the wall, but it's whatever you want to do, man. It's whatever you want to do. makes sense is I'm gonna go through some of this, at least this part, talk about it and how it kind of goes together. So I purchased this. This is the the holders for the chains, the very drives, which is the chains and it holds up the the paper behind me. They come with two of these super clamps, two super clamps right here, but I already had an extra one with me. So I picked up another one to have four because the ones that it comes with, it only comes with these two. You pretty much attach it to this and it'll have a super clamp attached to the very pole that I have behind me right here. The very pole behind me attaches to that. You'll be fine with just one, but for me, I like security <laughs> in my stuff. So I picked up one more because I already had another one to have four total. That will enable me to have pretty much one here and one on the bottom instead of having just one on the top. But like I said, it'll be fine probably with just two, the ones that it comes with, but fuck that. We're gonna do four total. So I think I might need to go to Lowe's or Home Depot to pick up some more of these screws because I think these are only going to be for the two that it comes with 
and I would need to buy some more of these little hex screws. I'm gonna try to put it together and see if I can do it with the four or if I need to go pick up some more of these hex screws to make all this shit work. See, I only have one screw in right now. The other side right now is empty, and the buttons on the bottom, the ones on the bottom have both in there. So, I'm about to see if this fits. I think it will. Perfect. It's a different color than the other ones. It's black. The other ones are like a stainless steel color or like silver color, but it works. So now I got both in there, and that's not going anywhere compared to how it was. I just had one twist it and it just turned. So. Definitely want to get two of these screws in here instead of one. So, but uh, it only comes with two, or it comes with four screws, but two go on each of the super clamps. And you have four super clamps, so you need eight screws. So, just make sure you get an extra four screws and an extra four washers to go in front of the screws as well. Yo, one important quick tip is to make sure you put this stuff on the right side. So, you got one left side and then one right side. Make sure these ratchet handles are on the outside. Unless you wanna put it on the inside, but I think that would be kind of weird. So just make sure you do either inside or outside and not two lefts and two rights, if that makes sense. So make sure when you put it together, it's like left side on the outside and then right side on the outside. Boom. It's okay, because we here working, getting this done. So all I have to do now is just raise this up. It might kind of be a struggle because it's just me in here. It would be beneficial to have an additional person with me to raise it up at the same time, but I'm gonna make that shit work. But I'm pretty much done. So all I gotta do is raise this up and then clean all of this stuff up right here. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. It is, uh, it's pretty hot in here and I have my AC on. I took my fan blades off of this fan in my room because the umbrella that I'm gonna show you later on in this video is too big for the blade, or the blades are sticking out and the umbrella hits the blade. So I took the blades apart from the actual fan. So the fan works, y'all can see that, but <laughs> there's just no blades on it. So it's kind of useless. So my AC definitely does help. But when I'm like doing these talking points right here, I turn my AC off so y'all can actually hear me because it's hella loud. This is the, uh, this is an impact 51 inch umbrella that I bought from d &H. So for my studio, it's gonna be a one light setup because this is a very, very small spot and I don't want to have it filled with a lot of gear and a bunch of bullshit that I don't need. So the main reason why I picked up an umbrella versus using a softbox, like a regular traditional softbox, like the one that's on my 120D, is because umbrellas can produce a wider span of light because of how big they can get. So this is a 51 inch that I picked up. Um, you got to see how big it is. Massive. My flash will be pointing directly towards the umbrella. It'll flash into the umbrella and it'll just spread to the model and to the background. I really think it's important to understand like what you're doing <laughs> if you're using one light, because I know that can be like really like almost scary. Do a little bit of research, man. Like I always shot with just softboxes when I did studio work back in Germany, 
But now I realize if I'm using one light, a softbox is not going to be as good as an umbrella. It depends on what you're doing though. Like if you want focus and control light, then a softbox is going to be good for you. If you want wider light to fill the entire like frame, then an umbrella is going to be better for you. And it costs less too. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm very tired and I'm kind of blown out. That's, that's okay. Um, damn man, those shots kind of got me now. I didn't drink some water. It's hot. I'm breathing heavy. I sound like a fat ass. <sighs> Anyways, man. Um, I don't know. But <laughs> Turn around, TT. Checking my audio. This is my first time using the Zoom H5, and we should be good. Yo, what's going on, guys, man? Welcome back to the later portion of this video. This is my first time using the Zoom, not Zoom. Yeah, I am using the Zoom. Zoom H5 plus the Ro. Uh. <laughs> What's the name of this fucking mic? NTG4 Plus. My first time using this mic. So hopefully you guys can tell a big difference in audio because I was going from using a boom mic or using the, the Video Mic Pro Plus to the NTG4 Plus. So hopefully there's a significant difference in audio quality. Um, if not, then I just wasted a lot of money on this and the audio recorder. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, I want to talk about this freaking studio backdrop. I definitely appreciate myself for not getting the one that screws into the wall because if you don't have the measurements correct, you're gonna have a difficult time and you're gonna be doing a lot of unscrewing and putting new holes into the wall. And like I said earlier, I don't, I mean, I rent this house that I live in and I'm about to be leaving soon. So it was a better investment for me to spend more money and get the one that is just without having to screw into a wall. So that's the main reason why I picked up the one I did. It's a very pulp kit. It's gonna be linked down in the description, like I said, along with everything else that I said, that's gonna be in the description for the things that I used uh, to make this studio backdrop set that I did within this video. One quick thing, I definitely uh, will say, make sure you are very, not like super gentle, but don't rush when it comes to putting the chains for the very poles or for the very chains uh, together because I messed up and ended up breaking one of the links to the chain. It's not a big deal because there's a lot of leeway if you mess up a couple of chains or a couple of links for the chain. If you want to be a little bit more safe, you can get the, the metal chains. That does cost a little bit more than the regular standard kit with the plastic chains. But just take your time. Don't apply a whole lot of pressure. You don't need a whole lot of pressure to connect it. When I pinched it, it pretty much like just cracked. But yeah, man, like I was saying, just take your time when you are dealing with these links to the chains. The setup was pretty easy. It did take me a little bit of time, but that was just me making sure everything was like damn near perfect. As perfect as I could have got it. Nobody's perfect. So, you know, we are humans. We make mistakes and all that kind of stuff. But I try to get it as close to perfect as possible with the measurements. One thing I will recommend you guys get, if you do get the very poles, get this right here. This will save you a ton when it comes to your balancing of the very poles, unless you have a really, really good eye. But nine times out of 10, it's not gonna be super straight to the human eye. It could be, you never know. You could just be super lucky or just whatever. But I highly recommend it. It costs five bucks on B&H. So, you know, just, just go add it to the cart if you are going to pick this up. The very poles, the very pole kit with the chains and 
the, uh, the holders and everything. I want to say the setup costs $249 just for the kit itself. Um, I did get other things and I'll put that entire price on the screen so you guys can see how much it costs. I think that is pretty much it. Impact, very pole kit for the studio backdrop. Highly recommend it. You can go the cheaper route and get the one that goes directly to the wall. But like I said, for me, I rent here and I'm about to leave really soon. So I don't want to have to spend time when I have to leave and pack everything up and have to fill the holes and all that stuff. It just makes it a lot easier and make the process 10 times faster when I'm about to pack my stuff up. So I went with this route. I like it a lot. If you guys are interested in buying it, it's going to be linked out in the description along with everything else that I've been talking about within this video, including this $5 <laughs> little leveler that you can use for your poles. These are like high key like stripper poles, <laughs> but not as strong. But so don't get any ideas. Yeah, man, I'm about to wrap this up. Hopefully you guys found this video to be informational, motivational, all the above. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing and I will for surely see you guys next week. I'm out guys, peace.